Welcome back. I hope you are all anticipating the result that we are going to describe all integers which can be written as sums of 2 squares and indeed we are going to do that. Let me recall the result that we have proved so far in that direction. We first of all proved that the form x square plus y square is multiplicative which means that if I take 2 integers which are represented by the numbers by the form x square plus y square then their product is again represented by the same form. Further we proved that 2 is represented by the form x square plus y square, p congruent to 1 modulo 4 is represented by the form. So, product of all these integers 2 power alpha into p1 power alpha 1, p2 power alpha 2, so on up to pr power alpha r, where pi r congruent to 1 mod 4 will definitely be represented by x square plus y square. Moreover, we can multiply any such number by a square. A single square is always represented by x square plus y square. And now we tell that p congruent to 3 mod 4, if it divides x square plus y square, then its square should divide x square plus y square. So, all these results are going to enable us to prove the following result. So, we can now combine all these results and write this set of integers represented by the form x square plus y square in the following result. An integer n is represented by x square plus y square if and only if all its prime factors p congruent to 3 mod 4 divide n to an even power. The only condition is on the factors of n which are congruent to 3 mod 4 that these factors, these prime factors should come with an even power. This is the only condition. Clearly, there is no condition on the powers of 2 that may appear. There is no condition on the powers of the other set of primes, those which are congruent to 1 modulo 4, on them also we have no condition. So, let us go and prove this result. We first prove that the condition is sufficient. So, if every prime factor of n e p congruent to 3 mod 4 divides n to an even power then n is 2 power alpha p1 power alpha 1 dot 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 pr power alpha r square q1 power beta 1 dot 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 qs power beta s where pi r congruent to 3 mod 4 qj's r congruent to 1 modulo 4. We are starting with the decomposition of our n into all its prime factors. The prime factors may be 2, they may be 1 mod 4 or they may be 3 mod 4. The prime factors which are 3 mod 4 have to come with an even power. Therefore, we have the following description. Here 2 power alpha into q1 power beta 1 dot 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 qs power beta s is represented by the form x square plus y square. Remember our form is multiplicative and each of these 2, q1, so on up to qs each of these is represented by the given form. So, their product 
in any way you take is going to be represented by the form hence n is also represented by represented by it. So, because n is nothing but a square into this quantity. So, n is also going to be represented by the form x square plus y square. So, we have proved that whenever p congruent to 3 mod 4 type of primes divide n to an even power, then n is always a sum of 2 squares. Now, we prove it in the other direction that when n is a sum of 2 squares and p congruent to 3 mod 4 divides n, it should divide it with an even power. This is very easy. If p congruent to 3 mod 4 divides n which is sum of 2 squares, then we have proved that p square should divide n. This is something that we have already proved and we have also proved that p should divide a and p should divide b. So, further we get that a by p square plus b by p squares divides it gives you n by p square, n by p square is a natural number. So, now we consider this number n by p square, if p again divides it, then we have if p divides n by p square, then its square should divide n by p square. And then by induction, we get that p divides n to an even power. We are reducing the numbers that are represented by a square plus b square in each step. If p divides n, we have p square dividing n, so we will look at n by p square. If p divides this number, then p square should divide this number, so we will look at n by p power 4. These numbers are slowly reducing and ultimately p will stop dividing these numbers and therefore we will have that p power 2r divides n. This is done for every prime p congruent to 3 mod 4 and therefore we have that whenever n is a sum of 2 squares then a prime p congruent to 3 mod 4 will divide n only with an even power. This gives a complete description as we have written in the last slide we have that n equal to a square plus b square are of the form where 2 is allowed to come with any power, primes which are congruent to 1 mod 4 they are allowed to come with any power, the primes which are congruent to 3 mod 4 they should come with an, an even power. This is the only condition which will now determine the whole set of integers which are sums of 2 squares for us completely. This gives the complete answer of forms which are represented by the numbers which are represented by the form x square plus y square. Once we are done with sum of 2 squares, the next natural question is what about sums of 3 squares? So, when we were looking at sums of 2 squares, it was useful to study the numbers modulo 4 because modulo 4 we know that the numbers the squares are congruent to 0 or 1. Modulo 4 the numbers are 0, 1, 2 and 3. When we take the squares 1 and 3 will give the square to be 1, 2 and 0 will give the square to be 0. So, you will have 0 comma 1 these are the only possible squares modulo 4 and therefore if you had a number which is 3 mod 4 that will never be a sum of 2 squares because you go modulo 4, the possibilities modulo 4 for squares are 0 and 1, 
So, sums of 2 squares will be 0 plus 1, 1 plus 1 or 1 plus 0 and of course 0 plus 0. So, all these will give you the possibilities to be 0 mod 4, 1 mod 4 or 2 mod 4, 3 mod 4 is not a possibility. And indeed I leave this as an exercise to you that any number which is 3 mod 4 has to have a prime factor which is congruent to 3 mod 4 with an odd power and therefore clearly such a number will not be a sum of 2 squares. But what about 3 squares? Something which is congruent to 3 mod 4 can be a sum of 3 squares. You may have 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. 3 odd numbers their squares is congruent to 3 mod 4 when summed up. So, going modulo 4 is not enough. We go modulo 8. It is useful to go modulo 8 when we are looking at sum of 3 squares. The squares modulo 8, now the numbers modulo 8, let us do this computation. So, numbers modulo 8 are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Let us compute their squares. 0 square is 0, 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9 which is again 1, 4 square is 16 which is 0, 5 square is 25 which is 1, 6 square is 36 which is 4 modulo 8 and 7 square is 1. So, what it tells us are that there are only these 3 numbers which are congruent to squares modulo 8. Any square modulo 8 is equivalent to equal to 0, 1 or 4 and therefore any n which is 7 mod 8 can never be a sum of 3 squares. Anything else will appear as a sum of 3 squares possibly, but 7 mod 8 will never come as a sum of 3 squares. Indeed, if you had 3 squares, if you had a square plus b square plus c square congruent to 7 mod 8, clearly all these a, b, c, their squares cannot come alone from 0 and 1 because then you do not reach 7. If a square and b square and c square come only from 0, 1, you do not reach 7, you will maximum reach 3. So, at least one of them has to be equal to 4. If you take one of them to be 4, now there are only 2 possibilities left. If you take 0, 0, you are stuck at 4. If you take 1, 0 or 0, 1, you are stuck at 5. And if you take 1, 1, you are stuck at 6 there is no way that you are going to get 7. So, 4 plus b square plus c square congruent to 7 mod 8 has no solution. So, if you have a number which is congruent to 7 mod 8 that is never going to be sum of 3 squares. Just like we had that a number which is 3 mod 4 is not a sum of 2 squares this is a result of in one direction. It says that if your number is of this form, it is not a sum of 3 squares. But it would be interesting to have a precise result. Just like we had for 2 squares where we described the set of all integers which are sums of 2 squares, we would like to know what are all integers which can be written as sums of 3 squares. The more precise result is as follows that any natural number which is not a sum of 3 squares, such a number will have to be of the form 4 power a into 8b plus 7 for some a b non-negative. So, that means if you assume this number to not have the factor 2, then such a number has to be congruent to 7 modulo 8. This is an if and only if statement, you start with an n, a natural number, assume that it is not a sum of 3 squares, then it has to be of this form, which means that if you take an integer which is not of this form, then it has to be a sum of 
3 squares. It would have been very interesting to see the proof of this result. But just like sum of 2 squares needed the theory of binary forms, we have used almost everything that we did for binary forms in proving this single theorem. In fact, one may say that we developed this whole theory because we wanted to prove this theorem. We use the equivalence, we use the theory of reduced forms, we use the theory that H d is 1 for H d equal to minus 4. We proved that use that there are only, there is only one reduced form up to equivalence. We have used all these things when we studied the numbers which are represented by sums of 2 squares. So, similarly this result, the proof of this result requires theory of ternary quadratic forms. Some people also call them tertiary quadratic forms. Of course, we are going to skip it because we do not have time to spend some more lectures on the theory of ternary quadratic forms which is a very interesting theory by the way and it would tell us this result, it would give us this result giving us an explicit description of the numbers which are represented by a sum of 3 squares. I should tell you that one important component in the representation for numbers of the form x square plus y square was that the form x square plus y square was multiplicative. That is no longer true. You may have 3 numbers, you may have 2 numbers which are both sums of 3 squares and you may wonder whether the product is also a sum of 3 squares that may follow from the description that we have here. But otherwise just by looking at the forms we do not have that result. That means it is not necessary that 2 numbers which are sums of 3 squares have the property that their product is also a sum of 3 squares. So we are not going to study this. On the other hand, we are going to study the theorem which is one step further, which is Lagrange's theorem. We will however prove that every natural number is a sum of 4 squares. This interesting result was proved by Lagrange in 1770. It was stated earlier by other mathematicians, but Lagrange seems to be the one who gave the proof for the first time and so we know it as Lagrange's theorem which says that every natural number n is a sum of 4 squares. And just as we proved that the form x square plus y square is multiplicative while determining the set of integers which are sums of 2 squares, here also we have the property that this form x square plus y square plus z square plus w square is multiplicative. By this I mean that if we have, so if n is a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square plus d1 square m is a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square plus d2 square, then mn equal to a3 square plus b3 square plus c3 square plus d3 square for sum a3 b3 c3 d3 in integers. So, of course, we will be able to write this a3 b3 c3 d3 in terms of a1 b1 c1 d1 and a2 b2 c2 d2. We had used the theory of complex numbers while studying the sums of 2 squares. We saw that x square plus y square is actually the square of the modulus of the complex numbers, uh, complex number x plus i y. Here we have a similar theory. There are numbers which are called quaternions and it turns out that x square plus y square plus z square plus w square is indeed square of a certain quaternion and the quaternions are closed under multiplication. 
So, what we would have is that this is square of one particular quaternion let us call it q1 and this is square of some another quaternion called q2 and then it would follow that we have q1 q2 the product and their modulus square is mn which is then further written as sum of 4 squares because the modulus square of a quaternion is a sum of 4 squares. But unless and until we know quaternions we would, we would not be able to appreciate this. So, let us look at it from another angle. Consider the matrix x plus i y and the second diagonal entry is x minus i y. So, that when we take this product we are going to get x square plus i x y minus i x y minus i square y square which gives us x square plus y square and we have z plus w there. So, we will take z plus i w and minus of z minus i w. So, we have this matrix let us call this matrix as A, then determinant of A is the diagonal entries product which is x square plus y square minus the product in the anti diagonal entries which is negative of z square plus w square which gives us x square plus y square plus z square plus w square. So, we have noticed that the matrix of this particular type has the property that its determinant is equal to sum of 4 squares where the those 4 entries are nothing but the real part, imaginary part, real part and imaginary part in the first row. The only thing now that we have to understand is that whenever we take such a matrix. So, let me write this matrix once again for you. So, I will call this matrix by alpha and alpha bar here because if you have the complex number here to be alpha, this number is its complex conjugate. So, you have alpha alpha bar. Here I have another complex number beta, then I have negative of beta beta bar. So, our matrix is of the form alpha beta minus beta bar alpha bar. We are looking at the set of these matrices where alpha and beta come from complex numbers. We claim that this is closed under multiplication. So, we will prove that whenever I take any matrix A of this form and another matrix B of this form, suppose alpha beta minus beta bar alpha bar, gamma delta minus gamma bar minus delta bar gamma bar, their product should again be of matrix of the same form. If you have this property, then it will be clear that the A square plus B square plus C square plus D square which is determinant of one such matrix into some another say x square plus y square plus z square plus w square which is determinant of another such matrix will again be determinant of their product which are which is again of the same form and so the determinant is going to be a sum of 4 squares once again. So, we have to just prove that when we take alpha beta minus beta bar alpha bar into gamma delta minus delta bar gamma bar the product is again of the same form.
we will simply compute this product of matrices. We get it to be alpha gamma minus beta delta bar minus gamma beta bar minus alpha bar delta bar alpha delta plus beta gamma bar and minus delta beta bar plus alpha bar gamma bar. So, we observe that this is again of the form eta mu minus mu bar eta bar by observing that the complex conjugate of this number is this number. We had delta bar and here delta is the only number which does not have a bar. Here gamma is the only thing which has a bar and here gamma is the only thing which does not have a bar. We will take the bar which will give us alpha bar delta bar plus beta bar gamma and then we multiply by negative 1 because we want to get this as minus of mu bar where mu is equal to this quantity. So, we have therefore proved that whenever I take any two such matrices their product is again of the same form and this proves that if I have a 1 square plus b 1 square plus c 1 square plus d 1 square I will write it as determinant of the matrix A. To that I multiply by the number a 2 square plus b 2 square plus c 2 square plus d 2 square which I write as the determinant of the matrix B. I will then compute the matrix C which is again of the same form which we have proved here. Write its determinant here which gives us A3 square plus B3 square plus C3 square plus D3 square. So, the form x square plus y square plus z square plus w square is multiplicative. We have not developed the theory of the quaternary quadratic form. So, we are not going to use any theory, but Lagrange's theorem is a beautiful theorem. It uses one method called the method of descent. Our proof uses the method called method of descent, where we will prove that you st once you start with a prime which is represented by which we want to be proved to be represented by this form then a multiple of the prime is represented by this form and we will reduce that multiple slowly so that that multiple becomes 1. Once again because the form is multiplicative all you have to prove is that all primes are represented by this form. It is easy to see that 2 is represented by this form. The prime 2 is represented by this form and that is a very simple proof we have that 2 is 1 square plus 1 square plus 0 square plus 0 square that is it. So, 2 is represented by this form and now the only thing we need to do is to show that every odd prime is represented by this form which is x square plus y square plus z square plus w square. We will prove this in the next lecture. So, see you until then. Thank you very much.